feel like I'm in the boss battles right now, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. Xbox, in my opinion, is just sus in general. It's... So there's a reason behind that, right? So the reason why even developers right now prefer to work on the PlayStation 5 instead of on the Xbox Series X is the same reason why developers loved working on the Xbox 360 but hated working on the PlayStation 3. And it's all about the, the, the developer's infrastructure and architecture that they get to work with behind the scenes. Because when you make games, essentially you have... Most, most games you see are obviously made on PCs, but on top of that, they, the best way to describe it is like they have to fit inside of this little playground. And this playground is the architecture of your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox Series X. And in that playground, you have to fit all of your toys, all of your pieces, all of your jungle gym sand, all that stuff in this small box that is the architecture of a console. Uh, the problem that you end up running into is when you have a method that ends up working for making games inside of your little playground, right? Inside of your little rectangle. You know how to make everything inside of there. Now, not only are you trying to make everything that you have work inside of that, you then have a new playground to work with, which is the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. It's bigger. Here's the problem. If you don't do it right, it's more complicated trying to work in it and then maybe oh wait this 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 piece doesn't fit over in this box and this doesn't fit in that and the problem you end up running into is that the playstation 5 and uh, the xbox series x infrastructure is more complicated for developers to work with than the xbox uh one x was right so what ends up happening is you can't translate one for one all of the the same exact methods of development that you'd want to use uh, and you have to restart from the beginning a lot of things that you'd normally do very easily that's the problem that halo is running into right now with halo infinite that's the same thing that developers ran into and why they hated working on the playstation 3. the infrastructure was entirely different from the playstation 2. it was not easy to work with it was cumbersome so the same exact reasons that people uh, hated developing games in the PlayStation 3 is the same issues that people are having now with the Xbox Series X. And over time, people will become much more efficient with it, just like with the PlayStation 3. I mean, the jump from Uncharted 1 to The Last of Us, just looking at the same developers from Uncharted 1 to The Last of Us, is a very big leap in quality from people working on the same console infrastructure. So I am completely confident that by the end of the Xbox Series X's life cycle, there's going to be some gorgeous and amazing and well-optimized games on there. Uh, but until then, it's a steep learning curve. And the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 have a very similar playground, a very similar architecture. So it makes it very, very easy for developers to just come in, take exactly the same working methods that they use for developing on the PlayStation 4 and transfer them like right over to the PlayStation 5. So like, it's not even like a console wars thing. It's just, it takes time to get used to all of this stuff, you know? It's just gonna take some time. I'm excited to see how it's gonna turn out though. I'm excited to see how it's gonna turn out. Cause there's, uh, there's a lot of potential. There's certainly a lot of potential there. But it just, um, it's just gonna take time, man. It's just gonna take time. And it's just, like, it's all like chat it's it's already hard enough to make a video game right so not only for games like halo or like call of duty are developers making it for the current or past generation of consoles trying to adapt and learn how to make every single thing work on a next generation is absolutely insane and i commend games that start off as you know launch titles for a console but are you know, uh, multi-platform, like that is hard to do. And especially to actually make it a decent game. Like that's why I've, I'm genuinely in all of that, in awe of Valhalla because I've had less bugs and technical issues in this game than I've had with Odyssey. And yet the, yet the vastness of what they've had to do to cover all these console bases is insane. Absolutely insane. 
that was a good take, but I'm scared uh, that PlayStation 5 will have too many exclusives and Xbox will lose good games. Not necessarily. I, I think Xbox knows about PlayStation 5's and or PlayStation in general's upper hand with all of these exclusives. But the way PlayStation is doing their hand right now is bombarding you. They're bombarding you with nothing but exclusives because they've been timing this out perfectly. They've been getting all of their developers in sync to work and get these games out at certain times so you feel constantly bombarded with PlayStation exclusives and you feel like you're getting your bang for your buck for being a PlayStation member, right? But Xbox is playing the long game here. And even though it's a bit worrisome now, you'll eventually see that they played a very, very smart game. Because Game Pass is, as much as I like I like to joke on it, because it's like, oh wow, with my Xbox Series X, I can play all the games that I already owned beforehand and nothing new. Uh, as much as I make jokes about that, that is legitimately an amazing feature. Because literally everything going back to Xbox, the original Xbox, is playable. So slowly but surely, players are building up this massive catalog of games that they are going to have at all times, games they've never tried, games they've never loved. And then on top of that, they've been making so many studio acquisitions. Uh, studio, um, the people who make uh, Hellblade, the uh, getting Bethesda and all of their IPs and all that stuff. They are playing a long game so that they are trying to get themselves into shape. They're trying to get their developers into shape. Eventually they will have that sinking kind of like how uh, uh, PlayStation has it right now, where they're gonna get everything timed up perfectly, where it feels like release after release every single quarter. But then on top of that, you're gonna have a massive library of games. And on top of, on top of, on top of that, also, you're gonna get those games for free with Game Pass. So yeah, it, Xbox is, right now, they're playing the long game. They're playing the long game. And the thing is, they have the money to do that. They had the money to take a whole bunch of losses on things that normal people would do because they got Microsoft money. As compared to Sony, Sony's got money, but Sony doesn't like to spend as much money as they want to make, right? Especially in the long run. So Sony would be like, look, we're gonna drop $500 million plus $150 million in marketing right now for this video game that's gonna be out in the next three years or so and we're gonna get this guaranteed X amount of profit over time. That's gonna be in a very short window as compared to Xbox is saying, you know, we'll spend twice that amount over a series of games and they'll just be ready when they're ready. In the meantime, we're gonna strike these deals for Game Pass. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's gonna take some time, but it's gonna be worth it. Too bad I come from an alternate reality where Sony and Microsoft teamed up and made a console that killed PC. Well, that's the thing, right? I think there was a point in time where Xbox had to seriously consider just being a software developer like Sega. Because Sega used to make consoles, right? Uh, but now, as the business has changed and uh, their competitors ended up outshining them as time went on, with console development, they just make software now. And I think there's a point in time where Microsoft had to genuinely consider, maybe we're not meant out for, meant, you know, cut for the console game. But there was a lot of issues that they had with the Xbox 360 that almost killed the console because of the red ring of death and all that stuff. And that cost them a bunch of money to the lukewarm reception and kind of losing essentially the console wars of the Xbox One era. There is a, there's a lot that goes into it. And I think there is a, there was a, a genuine timeline <laughs> that we don't live in, but there is genuinely a timeline where they consider where there is no Xbox Series X and they just have Microsoft Studios games, right? And it's just one big Microsoft Studios umbrella and they just make games, you know? Still making a profit, but they just cut their losses on the consoles, you know? But, uh... Still, at the end of the day, PC is just its own market, so there's no killing that. So, that, that second part of that statement, there's just, there's no, there's no killing PC. Especially when a lot of, in most cases, it is the superior, 
experience to a certain degree. But yeah, I mean, it is, it, it is, oh my god, my controller just fell. But it is interesting to think of a timeline of where, you know, what, where Microsoft could still be around, but as a software developer only. I think it'd be really fascinating. It's fascinating to think about how that industry would change. Because I bet you back in the day, no one would have ever thought that Sega would stop making consoles. So, time reveals all in the end, and we look at history and the fascinating waves that it ebbs and flows, and we're honestly looking at a possibility now that Sega ends up being bought out by Microsoft. They have a really good relationship together. You know? It's fascinating. I love talking about this stuff. It's truly fascinating. I wonder what's going to happen to Nintendo. Oh, dude, Nintendo's fine. Now Nintendo's fine. Nintendo during the Wii U, that was scary. But Nintendo's fine. They're fine. They have they have finally found a stronger footing in the current gen of consoles. Because they realized, okay, maybe we can't spend, you know, a shoelace and, and a piece of copper on the development of our hardware. And we should actually spend some money to make, you know, make our, uh, our consoles a little bit beefier. <laughs> and actually perform so the developers have a little bit easier of a time making games on there but uh you know nintendo's fine nintendo's nintendo's fine they're, they're making money hand over fist because they literally just fist nostalgia down your throat in a slightly repackaged way and we just buy it and eat it up they are truly the disney of gaming they are just yeah they, they don't have to do much and they're they're making money <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not saying their games are bad. I'm just saying like they don't have to do much in order to sell very well. And they realize the mistakes that they made in the Wii U era and uh, the way Nintendo D double D S P S P Q X Y Z 4 D plus six divided by nine, 365 days over two sleep edition of their Nintendo handheld console. So they don't have to do that stuff anymore. Uh, and they, they realize the mistakes that they made there. But uh, yeah, Nintendo's doing great with the Switch. I think if they truly want to be like even greater, they keep doing what they're doing with handheld and with the Switch Lite and the regular Switch and they make a Switch Pro that is, it doesn't have to be the strength of like a PlayStation 5, but make something for those hardcore gamers of their fan base who they kind of neglect and make something that's at least strong, like a PlayStation 4, you know, maybe PlayStation 4 Pro or something like that, like a strong Nintendo-based console. Developers will love them more. Developers will like making games for them more and get rid of the cartridges. And they could, they could do some serious damage in the industry, man. They could do some serious damage. The music where you sit in the bar, <laughs> the catchy is amazing. All Persona 5 music is fantastic. But chat, we've been chatting too much. Chat room, we're almost 30 minutes into this stream and we haven't even started the game. You got me, you got me sitting here blabbering my mouth talking about things I enjoy. Stop it. <laughs> gotta play some video games, chat. This is Twitch. What are you doing? Let's see here, hold on. <laughs> 